Well, joining me all the way from Reykjavik in Iceland is Siddhant Mohapatra. Hello, Siddhant. How are you? Uh, hello, I'm fine. Thank you. Siddhant, uh, do, you, do you hear the noise in the background? They are oh, actually I... celebrating uh, maybe your GM norm, it seems. <laughs> Well, a uh, huge congratulations to you for making your first IM norm, which is uh, uh, an amazing result. Um, how, how is the feeling? Uh, yeah, uh, I got my IM title in uh, 2017 and uh, yeah, after six years, I got my first GM norm. Wow. So it has been a long wait, but yeah, finally I did it. Yes, and, and so it's the quite start happy of... about it. Sorry? Quite happy about it. I did uh, miss my norm in Riddleton Cup also this year. But okay, finally, I'm happy to make it. Amazing. And and I think you performed so well. Just to show your performance, you were uh, you scored 6.5 out of 9. And you managed to beat uh, one GM, couple of IEMs there. Uh, you also played a, a few draws and I mean, in general, a very solid performance, right? To to make your GM norm. Uh, it was uh, it was really nice uh, playing here in Reykjavik. Uh, I don't know why, but it was uh, chilly, it was windy, but I somehow liked it. Uh, the atmosphere and the game just went on and it was amazing. Yeah, fantastic. And these are uh, some of your uh, pictures from there after you got the norm. Uh, I think you also got a trophy. What is that? Is it uh, made of something uh, special? It was, uh, it was made of uh, lava rock. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it was very unique. And I got this because I also won the first prize in uh, under 2400 category, rating ah, category. Brilliant. So... And also, this is you receiving the prize. Um, and, you know, Siddhant, I want to go over one of your favorite games from this event. But before doing that, I wanted to ask you, what is it that, you know, sort of keeps you going in chess? Uh, you know, you, you are no longer very young, right? Uh, and generally, people at this point say, oh, there are other responsibilities that I have to handle. Now I'm 25 years old, 24 years old. Uh, but you are focused. So who are the people who are helping you and what keeps you going? Yeah, first of all, I really like the game. I mean, I enjoy playing it. So, you know, when I am sitting in a tournament in front of my opponent, that uh, the feel that uh, keeps me going. And I really uh, enjoy being there. And... Uh, I can meet my friends also in the tournament. So that is one of the reasons, like, uh, you know, as we have given us so much time to chase, we don't have much friends outside the chase area. So you get to play tournaments, you get to hang out with your friends, you get to play tournaments and that keeps you motivating. Also, these young uh, kids who are doing really well, they also kind of helped me a lot. Uh, you know, I, I was in touch with Nihal, Arjun. They all uh, keep pushing me that, yeah, you can do it. Go for it. So, you know, that also helps a lot. Uh, uh, and uh, It's amazing to know that these youngsters uh, keep, keep uh, inspiring you. Yes, yes, definitely. Like, uh, they, they are uh, so humble. And uh, they achieved so much in uh, such a young age, but yeah, they are very humble and they always uh, keep pushing me like, yeah, that uh, you can do it, go for it. Uh, and uh, after the round also, they sometimes takes me, yeah, you did really well if you play a good game. So, you know, that feels nice that someone uh, so strong player kind of follows your game and checks on you also. And also, I think I have to give credit to my family. Uh, they they always back me up uh, whenever the result was not good. Uh, I now joined Railways. Uh, the Railways is also helping me, uh, especially the Eastern Railway team. They're really nice. They're really helpful. 
and uh, then i like to mention two players one is swayam uh, mishra my coach and uh, also uh, dhulipala balachandra prasad uh, he is my training partner and uh, we work together he he is also a very strong uh, international master uh, he he helps me a lot during the tournament also wow and you this shows how many people you know support you in your journey and i don't think it will take you very long to get your remaining two norms and the gm title uh, i hope so too. <laughs> let's see <laughs> let's uh, let's hope this is a good beginning of something for sure for sure it will be uh, let's go to the game that you played against marsin zuba because i think this was the critical game that helped you in your bid to make a gm norm Yes, actually, because seventh round I was playing against Sham Nikhil and I was winning that game, but I simply could not find the winning resources, the winning idea, and then I had to win the next round with white pieces because that will be my white last white pieces. So if I win this, I am getting closer to the norm. So yeah, this was very important. Yes. So let's go over this game. You opened with one e four. he played sicilian and very soon we were in nidorf territory uh, and you chose bishop g5 which is the sharpest line w- would you call yourself as a very sharp like uh, aggressive player no 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 definitely not but uh, uh, recently i like playing this complicated positions and uh, as you know i had to try for a win so i thought going for a sharp line makes more sense uh, also that's what my coach suggested me so i was like he said okay play bishop g5 and we'll see what happens there okay fantastic so e6 was played you went f4 uh, and your opponent didn't go for the poison pawn variation which might have been something you would have prepared uh, very well against he went yes bishop i e7. had to check uh, all those lines because uh, in this knight of like and he has been playing a lot also mm. instead of e6 he has been playing knight b d7 uh, so yeah i had to check a lot of lines uh, but yeah i'm happy that i could remember it during <laughs> the game. okay tell us till what point was it your prep so after queen f3 queen c7 uh-huh. long castle knight d7 i i think this is all well known theory g4 yes h6 mm-hmm. take and is knight f6 more common here or uh, is bishop f6 not normal uh, uh, i think uh, giri recommended this bishop f6 idea mm. so after that it uh, became quite popular okay also knight f6 it uh, doesn't do anything much because it's just uh, kind of uh, uh, allows this h4 g5 push uh, mm. very uh, easily So bishop f6 has a very concrete idea so that's why it it is played what is the concrete idea yeah the, you will see that this next move so h4 okay so this is a knight b6 mm-hmm. and you go g5 right yeah here black takes on d4 okay this Look. is the point but but takes here and and, and this feels like black has got nothing right i mean what is it that black has got here I mean, white has black plays the black plays the next move, queen c five. Okay. And now, yes, uh, rook d two uh, is generally played a lot. Yeah. And then black continues with, uh, I think, bishop d seven and king e seven, and black does get some play on the queen side, and the king is pretty safe on the center. Got it. So a uh, typical knight of position where you don't understand what's going on and why it's played. <laughs> right, but you played the most natural move, which is queen d3, and you told your opponent that look now your d6 pawn is very weak. Yes, a queen d3. Uh, actually, something which Seth Roman has suggested in his e4 chessable course. Okay. So I kind of knew that. So, queen so, so it was Sethu uh, Raman's recommendation versus Anish Giri's recommendation. Yes, you can <laughs> say that uh, Giri did mention that this variation is fine for black, which I believe it still is. But queen d3 does pose some uh, practical issues to your opponent, especially if you don't know what's going on. 
got it so so here quick yeah a g5 here uh, what the point was what giri showed that if you take fg5 rook h4 is possible ah beautiful take... and queen g5 and black is absolutely fine here right so yeah after hg5 this is what sethuraman suggested d4 here wow nice so pushing the queen away uh huh i think queen c7 is FG5. the only move right queen c7 yes and then you take fg5 and uh, yeah you did uh, weaken your king a bit but black cannot really take advantage of it and you get all the, this h5 uh, g then followed by g6 or h6 ideas at this point uh, was your did your opponent already start thinking yeah uh, he did started thinking after b for a bit uh, then uh, queen c7 and uh, he played king e7 yeah now, because he has to defend like d6 so he goes yes. king e7 yes yeah here i was not able to like uh, recall what was it so i took i knew the general idea but it's not like some portion you can play with the general idea yes, okay. you know you need to know the exact move here yeah so yeah even though uh, i knew the line uh, few more moves uh, on from this portion but i was not sure if that is the correct move or not so yeah i, I think yeah later i checked i played the right move only so yeah h5 five uh, well you are like okay yeah. i'm just going forward with my h pawn let's see how far it can go the point is uh, i am going to play queen f3 and i am going to play h6 so that f6 square is going to be very weak nice got it so he so, played bishop d7 which was natural developing move you went here yes, with your queen plan f3. and he said yes. wait a yeah. minute you can't do h6 because c3 is hanging yeah, but instead of rook a c8 he should play rook h c8 but, so that but that's so counter will be hanging counter intuitive yeah to bring your yes but but the point here is in some cases after h6 the h8 rook won't be hanging after queen f6 check ah, so you just it. <laughs> it's a kind of very move to move thing so Yeah, he played rook c8. I think he missed this reply. He rook h3. I, I, my nat natural in feeling is to go king b2, but I think that falls to. I would, I would ask uh, people to pause here uh, and think what is the move that black can do. Yeah. Okay, Siddhant, you can, you can reveal the answer here. <laughs> yeah, black just plays queen into c3 and black wins the game. And knight, and knight a4. a4. Beautiful. Okay, so you went rook h3 here. Yes, yes. Rook h three, and actually, funnily enough, after e five, my both rooks are hanging here. Right. So that's what he played. Ooh. But I think e five is a serious uh, mistake on his part. Hmm. Uh, because my next move for uh, rook c four, and suddenly black is uh, struggling to keep his position intact here, right. because knight c four meets, uh, meets with. Knight d5 check and I win the queen. Rook c4 is such a spectacular move. I did he miss it or he underestimated it or? I think he uh he saw that because he took a pretty much uh, a lot of time and if not rook c4 I am just lost after e5. Correct, correct. So I think, but I think he uh, misevaluated the uh, lines following uh, lines, uh, which I think he thought he is fine. But I felt he is just lost after this portion. So queen d eight. Because uh, this this rook c four is actually the savior in lot of lines. Hmm. Can you come back one move? Yeah, let's go back uh, here. Yeah, here uh, also like uh, after rook h three. Mm. He could do something like knight a4, you know, putting more pressure on the c3 end. But again, the same rook c4, or even h6, knight c3, rook c4 solves everything. Oh, oh sorry, g6. Uh, not not h6 because now queen c3 is possible. Right, right. G6. G6. Yeah. And f7 is hanging. Yes. So so. A knight c3 always meets with rook c4. Ah, and if queen c three, 
then then you are... you take queen f7 and then i take the queen I with my rook you take the queen here nice nice so rook c4 is the move which you had in mind but uh, e5 changes it in one way that d5 square is weakened and so he cannot yes. take with the knight and there is a fork lurking here beautiful yes. so queen d8 was played and now you took here yes. queen takes c8 and uh, well i think uh, you he expected you to move the rook away from h3 i think so yes yes i think because my next move after my next move uh, he sank into a long thought but i think he expected me to remove my rook and then uh, he get some time to consolidate his position but what a move this was i mean this is so pretty i would ask the viewers to think here what is the move that siddhant played here such a pretty move and it goes back to the point which he had just mentioned a few minutes ago which is to sort of soften up the f6 square h6 wow it was this easy to calculate because okay let's say my first intention is to take you take back right yeah this yeah i take on a g7 and where your rook goes so that is the first question because because i can't even take here there is a check and you take this and you yes. win the queen right yes yes so uh i think rook g8 looks like the most natural move yeah now i take uh, bishop h3 ah so the queen is hanging now so you have to remove your queen let's say i go and here and this uh, is then i play queen c7 a queen, queen f6 and uh, i think i do have g6 already here a uh, g6 <laughs> nice what a move okay uh, and he can't take on c3 gf7 is hanging and i think he's just tied yes, up yes. completely yes also like i will take on d6 like the, i'll take on if i like his king is not going to survive this got it wow beautiful so he went queen to g8 but that's already an yes. admission that things have not gone so well for him after h yeah, actually g7 i thought was the simplest uh, move but i think i was wrong mm. here queen f2 is actually much simpler ah attacking the Again, b6 the knight most importantly going for the d5 square correct and he has no way to defend that knight and if he takes on h3 i just take it back and with yeah and again uh, the knight he cannot defend but he can he can maybe think of this line like uh, because i ah, you will first play g7 yeah yes here. i'll i'll take g7 yes ah. i'll take g7 then i'll go for all this queen b6 knight d5 correct correct because i was I th thinking i don't even if you do it directly maybe black is okay after say king here and take this maybe black is fine but again this is still lost because uh, well, his pawns are blockaded oh, correct 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 knight and d5. yes knight d5 bishop f5 like i just block that and I, I get my king and should be winning also true 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 but okay this is this is much more uh, difficult task so yeah here queen f2 would have been like a very pretty move uh, but okay yes. hg7 uh, you took he took on h3 because mm -hmm. i think queen g7 uh, would lose to queen f6 yes yes that is the whole point uh, of that queen f6 and we see this pretty pattern uh, yeah. and we so rook h3 and now uh, you you could have taken bishop h3 but you went in for a check here yes i that g7 pawn is uh, more of a piece so it's actually even values more than that right. so i wanted to keep that one because bishop h3 queen g7 and i think white gets nothing mm. yeah he defends that key f6 square Correct. So the whole uh, strategy of playing all this for that f6 square is no more available now. So you first give a check, king e8, and now chop on h3. He takes back. You are a piece down, but I think you had it all uh, worked out. Yeah, queen d6 now attacking the yes. knight. Where does the knight go? The only uh, square looks c8. Yeah, but knight c8, queen e5. You just lose by force. Queen e5. Okay. And uh, where does your king go? 
This and this two squares. Let's say king d8. Yeah, but knight d5. And now queen c7, knight f6 is you cannot stop that. Wow. Uh, and the same thing I guess for king d7 as well. Yes, yes. Now knight d5 is even coming directly. And this is also a problem. Yeah, true. So he said, let me get rid of this pawn. But uh, in yeah. doing so, he gives back the piece. But if you look at it, Siddhant, you have reached a position with equal material after everything. But it's not an equal uh, evaluation. Yes, uh, because my king is much safer than his king. And his pawns are very weak in this position. Mm. So I was quite happy because I thought, okay, I'll get my knight and queen knight, uh, queen and knight, they work really good uh, together. So I was uh, kind of sure I should be winning here. But yeah, I always felt that I did miss some wins earlier. Like this should not be this position from that uh, position. Correct. As you showed, queen f2 was stronger there. Maybe that was yes. the winning opportunity. But f5, you gave a check. He went back with yes. his queen and you said, okay, no, no queen trade for now. Uh, queen d8, yeah. he had to go back. Can he play king f7 or it's maybe knight d5? Yeah, yeah? yeah knight d5 and then uh, we, I just start attacking because uh, next I will play queen h8 if I get the chance. And then his king uh, is going to be attacked uh, from uh, queen and knight. So not a good thing for him right i was also thinking queen d8 and now i take on b7 so i'm a pawn off pawn now off. yeah he played queen d4 pinning there yeah and you gave a check so i also yeah the, the, it's more like winning the f5 pawn that is uh, what queen c8 does so uh, now he can't push yes. forward he can't take it's pinned here yes so he went bishop g4 still it's pinned yeah bishop Yes, here probably I should have just taken e takes f5 and uh, that's just game over because he cannot stop queen e6 check. Ah, what were you afraid of? I mean, somehow thought because I played queen b7 check because I'm taking on a6 with a check also. Hmm. So, yeah, I completely uh, misplayed this position. But can you not go back to the last rank like say king f8 or king g8? So that this yeah. doesn't fall with a check. Yeah, but I can still take on a6. Ah, and and you still cannot take because I do have all this queen g6 check. Right, right. So he had to go here. You chopped it off with yeah. a check, king here. And now it kind of yeah. becomes a race. Here I make a horrible decision. I should have just taken e takes f5 and two pawns of safer king should be easy technical win. But instead, I went b5 and I completely missed his reply. He took f4 and then I cannot stop the e pawn from queening. What? Really? e3? Ah, because your knight is pinned. So actually, e2, yes, e1 I, is coming. I Yeah, I cannot. And his king is uh, very well placed on g5 suddenly. And so, okay, I was like really regretting here that I messed it up a long time uh, from that position. Because you don't want, <laughs> you want to finish it off, <laughs> but not the... Uh, and, and the thing is, you can't even checkmate his king, right? Because if you go yeah, check he, here... He, he king, his king just comes uh, and hides on g3. Yeah, and it would yeah. be like super safe here. In fact, you have no more checks and maybe he's better. Yes. Yeah, like with this portions, you are not sure, like... What I was... Uh, uh, not afraid of that. Okay, I don't have any checks mm. uh, in this position, and uh, my c3 knight is hanging. I should do something about it because that is eternal queen. I cannot remove my knight from that. So I thought, okay, let's exchange one more queen. <laughs> <laughs> At least we'll be stuck. <laughs> trade one queen, bishop f5, queen c6. These are all very random moves. Yeah, very tough to think of. Why did you play queen uh, c6? Yeah, I, I will tell you why I played queen c6. So the point is, uh, after bishop f5, mm. uh, I could go queen e7 check. Yeah. So king g4, queen g7 check, king f3, 
queen c6 check. He has this queen e e4. And uh, I have to exchange the queen. And now my king, uh, well, like pawn structure is not ideal. Hmm. And I think he gets enough counterplay here. So the point of queen c6 was to stop this queen f3, king f3 later on. Oh, so that after check here, king g4, queen g7, there's no king f3. No king f3. And then if a king goes to the dark square, then my queen could give a check and then it will be over for him. That deep. And deep. Uh, the point is my king uh, is not uh, going to get any checks in next move. So I'm quite relieved from that. Okay, that is fine. And and the uh, one more thing here is that um, was there a thirty minute increment after forty moves? Yes, yes, which was actually uh, uh, already uh, it went against me because my op I had uh, probably twenty minutes and my opponent was playing in seconds. Ah. But queen came on fortieth move only. Oh yes, so exactly. So this portion, so this portion without time would have been more difficult for him. But uh, yeah, with queen also it's kind of even same difficult you you need to calculate a lot of random moves here correct so he took the queen and he pushed he's putting his trust on the e pawn but i think yeah. it's much easier to push the b pawn now yes uh, the the fact is now his queen is on very badly placed uh, on e1 so i get all my pieces uh, working together he he needs three moves to give me a check Yes, and also like the queen on d4 was beautiful pinning the knight. This queen yes. does nothing. So you push the pawn, queen f2, yes. uh, check here, king e5, queen g7, check, no exchange of queens, king d5, queen b7, check, queen c6, check, king e7, check. And now you just, oh, nice. The uh, You just brought your queen to defend c2 and then you're queening the yes. pawn. And yeah, and I defended this h2 b diagonal and the c2 square and uh, I'm just gonna win my pawn next. Beautiful. What a game this was, uh, Siddhant. Uh, and truly at a level of GM and beyond. Uh, and uh, I, I enjoyed it so much. I'm sure the viewers would as well. Um, and what's next for you now? I know that you are going today to, to the city of Reykjavik. Maybe you will visit some very nice places. Yeah, we were actually going on a south shot uh, to Reykjavik. So we'll go to a few waterfalls, few countryside places. So it should be fun. Looking forward to it. Such a beautiful country, such such a beautiful people here. They are very nice right. and very helpful also. And my next tournament will be uh, Menorca uh, in, in Spain. Uh, that starts on 11. So you took it a bit light, yeah? You didn't go for La Roda. Yeah, because uh, it would be too tight. And uh, I thought, okay, four double rounds there and uh, three doubles in Menorca, it will be too much. Hmm. True. So I thought it's better to take some breaks, or take some breaks, then go for the next one. Fantastic. Well, Menorca, we hope that you do well. And uh, Siddhant, best wishes to you. Thank you for sharing this game and have a great time in Reykjavik. Thank you so much, Freya. Bye. Bye.